So hello to my uh, second uh, knitting podcast. Uh, welcome. I'm Isabelle. I am in France and uh, English is not my first uh, language, so please uh, uh, forgive me and forgive my mistakes and my hesitations. I lived in the United States for four years, but that was 30 years ago. So uh, uh, I still read and uh, I'm able to uh, listen to English very fluently, but uh, I've lost a bit of my talking. So uh, one of the reasons I'm uh, um, starting this podcast in English is because I want to practice and hopefully uh, as time goes by, I'll become uh, fluent again in practicing English. Um, so I'm Isabelle, I'm in France, I just said that. I have three sons, um, three cats, and uh, I'm not at home currently. I'm uh, in vacations um, in the beautiful, beautiful uh, mountains, uh, the Pyrenees, which, is, uh, which are the mountains that uh, just uh, at the border of uh, south of France and Spain. It's one of my favorite places. The place I, I come to um, get some free time and hike in the mountain uh, peacefully uh, with uh, uh, very pure air to breathe. So uh, I try to come here every year. I try, it's not always possible. Uh, but I try to come uh, to the Pyrenees every year. Uh, and there are a few places I like to come, and one of them I just went uh, yesterday, and I may talk about it a bit further in a, another podcast, because I had, I made a few pictures, and I took a small video, and I'm going to talk about it in um, uh, my acquisitions, but just very lightly today. Uh, so I have a few notes uh, here. I'm uh, going to put all the uh, useful information in the description box that is below the podcast. So if you're on a computer, you just uh, uh, click the show more. I think it's on this side uh, um, to, to see the description box. If you're uh, on a a uh, tablet or telephone, there is a small downsized arrow that you can click and you will have all the descriptions and all the links and everything. So I'm trying today uh, also not, not necessarily to show you pictures on my phone, uh, but to place them on, on, the, uh, on the video. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and you can see I have some uh, earphones uh, in my ears because uh, um, I think my sound was not that good on the previous podcast and one of my son who is a musician said uh, well people can bear with a poor or lesser quality for the video but they can't stand a bad sound so I'm trying with my uh, uh, earpods um, I'll see if I need to buy a microphone or if it's okay like that. Anyway, I'm still very much experimenting with all with all uh, video editing and making podcasts, but uh, uh, there are a few things um, I would like to bring to bring to you to give you uh, because I can't find them in the podcasts I'm following and I've been looking around quite a bit. There are many podcasts I follow about knitting. Uh, I don't watch them all because I don't have that much time. There are some kind of information I'm not always able to find. So I have to find it myself and maybe it can be one of the uh, chapters of these videos that uh, uh, that can be something a bit new. So, as everybody, I'm going to start with uh, what I am wearing. This is the Summer uh, Sorel sweater by Woolen Pine. Uh, so, the sleeves are short. Uh, the yarn is from a small creator who is in the south of France. 
that is called Ars Natura Creation. Uh, so these colorways are not available any longer. Uh, I'm gonna pop a picture, maybe I need, I need to scooch a bit to the side. I'm gonna try to pop a picture around here uh, of my whole sweater. Uh, so these colorways are not available anymore, but uh, uh, she is an independent dyer. Uh, she has an Etsy shop that I will uh, link below. It's a very enjoyable, it was a very enjoyable knit. It's very light to wear. It's also very warm because currently right now in France, we are in August and the weather is kind of terrible. Uh, we have 16 degrees here. Um, currently it should be in the 20s or 30s degrees Celsius. So it's quite cold and I do enjoy to have a, a, a woolen uh, sweater on uh, to wear. I, this is the only one I bought, I brought, uh, thinking maybe I will go out one or two days and have, go to a restaurant maybe. So I need to be a little bit more dressed up than just my hiking gear. Uh, but anyway, I'm kind of wearing it almost every day because it's very cold right now. Anyway, so that's what I am wearing. And uh, um, I have no finished objects. Uh, the Sotabosque shawl is the last one I finished and I talked about in my previous podcast. Um, it was a very, very uh, enjoyable knit once again. Um, uh, I'm very much enjoying uh, wearing it. It is very soft and may, people uh, stop me in the street to ask me where I bought this uh, shawl. Uh, so I'm very proud to say that I made it myself. So I kind to be, I try to be a bit more low key, but um, yeah, uh, people have stopped me in the street to ask me uh, uh, where I did buy the, the shop. So uh, I have a, a work in progress. So this is um, this is the Fresh Peonies shawl. Uh, so uh, Trellis, I'm not sure how to pronounce this in English, T-R-E-L-I-Z, Trellis, uh, from Trellis Color is Power has created a mystery box for her birthday. So maybe if I scooch a bit, uh, I'll be able to place a picture here uh, of what the mystery box was looking like, the uh, color uh, inspiration, the color board, and it's exactly what uh, the color I got. So it's an it was in the soft peaches and teals, and this is exactly what I have. I think I've sh showed it uh, in the previous pod podcast. I just had the yarn, uh, but uh, uh, there is no, there was no uh, pattern uh, which was released on the twenty sixth of uh, uh, July. That's uh, that was her birthday, so happy birthday again, um, and I casted on this uh, shawl a few days ago. So there are parts where, you know, at the cast on point, which is about here, you start with th three stitches and you increase a lot of stitches on each side. Um, so uh, with uh, the two yarns uh, held together, I think maybe this way you, you'll see a bit better. Um, so there is one finger in weight and one less weight, uh, mohair less weight, mohair and silk. And uh, um, so uh, we cast on with bo both yarns uh, held together. Then we move to a stripe, uh, a stripe section where each yarn is held individually. So the peachy one here is the mohair the lighter one here is the fingering. Then we move to having both yarns uh, held together again uh, to, uh, to knit this very easy lace pattern. Uh, it's just knit two together and yarn others, so it's very easy 
a very easy eyelet pattern, lace pattern. And then we move again to using only one of the yarn. So you see you here you have the mohair and here you have the fingering. And so the fingering is more on the beige base with a peach and teal and the mohair is more on the soft pink uh, side. Uh, so I'm going to show you both yarn, both yarns here, if I can have them out of my bag. So this is the fingering weight yarn and this is the mohair silk. So here you have the mohair and here you have the fingering. So I'm very much enjoying this um, uh, knitting. Uh, it's very easy, very relaxing, nothing difficult. Um, and uh, I think it's very, it's going to be very airy and soft and warm. And uh, it's a bit of out of my comfort zone. Uh, I'm not on the peach and tilly side of colors. You see here is blue and I'm more like in the whole ranges of blue or the whole range of blues and the whole range of browns. but not much on the teal and peach and such colors or pink. Uh, but I'm very, very happy to uh, have these colors because it's going to fit very well in all my wardrobe, which is mostly blues and browns. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, it was a very good, uh, a very good buy, very good idea to have to buy this mystery box and uh, a very good, uh, I trusted her and her friend who made the pattern. Uh, I will need, put their name and links uh, uh, down below. And uh, um, I decided to trust them and uh, I was, I'm very happy I did. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have a section now about books uh, because uh, um, this is something I do enjoy very much when uh, I see people talking about uh, books they found or they bought. And uh, so unfortunately, I don't have any of them right now with me uh, because one of them is uh, um, a pre-order. Uh, uh, so um, the uh, book is called, uh, or it's a magazine, it's called the Slow Magazine. Uh, it's uh, uh, some uh, uh, a publication that uh, so S L O W uh, that uh, follows another magazine that I did not get because it went out. I was not in the fiber community anymore and uh, yet, and uh, uh, so I did not know about it. And it's out of print, I think. Um, but this one I pre-ordered, it's all in French. I'm very sorry for uh, the international people who do not read French. It's all in French, it's, it's only in print, I think. Uh, I haven't seen uh, any other uh, uh, publications about uh, um, the patterns from the previous magazines, but, but maybe I haven't looked around uh, enough. Uh, so I, I'll try to look around and when the booklets and the magazine is out, um, I'll try to find uh, or if you can have it online, but I, the patterns, but I do not think so. I think you have to order uh, the slow magazine. This magazine, there is, uh, there are nine patterns, if I uh, recall, uh, recall correctly, that will be published all in France, in French, sorry, all in French. And uh, uh, it's uh, uh, published by Marie Amélie Designs, uh, which is uh, Marmelade on both uh, Ravelry and Instagram. And I will put all the links uh, down below. Uh, and uh, uh, she uh, hi highlights nine patterns from independent dyers and creators uh, from France. So um, if you are interested, I will link uh, the book below 
and the booklet below. Um, uh, and uh, when I, when I receive it, I think I'll I'll uh, show it to you. The second book uh, I have uh, pre-ordered is, is a book that is in English, and it's called. So I'm trying to put pictures again. Um, I, I hope. I hope I will uh, manage to put the pictures. Uh, it's about uh, a Ganze uh, knitting source book. So it's all about pat stitch patterns. And uh, um, not much, I, I think there are a few uh, garments uh, patterns in the book, but mainly the book is a source book about stitches. And I'm very much interested into having such books. I already have several of them. I can once I get it, I can make a, a, a short sequence about these books uh, in particular, if you are interested. Uh, because at some point, uh, for now, I'm just knitting uh, from patterns uh, from other creators, and I'm very happy to buy the patterns, and I'm very happy to buy the yarns from the creators. Uh, but at some point, I think uh, uh, if I have enough time to think about it, and uh, I would like to make my own sweater or in my own t-shirt with a pattern that I can find maybe uh, in one of these uh, inspirational books. So um, uh, this is why I'm collecting uh, source books like these ones, like this one. Uh, because uh, I, when, whenever I'm at work and uh, I need a break, even a short break, I like to think about knitting and, you know, what, what I could do or browse pat patterns or, yarn. you know, some people go out and have a smoke and I don't smoke. Some people go uh, uh, to the coffee machine and talk with other people. I do that. I like to do that, but not all the time. And sometimes you just have three, four, five minutes, ten minutes to have a break. So I'm, I like to do that. And uh, uh, I like to uh, browse uh, stitches uh, online, but, but I like books. I like the smell of books. I, ha I like having them. I like touching them, turning the pages and everything. So um, in order not to um, tear them apart and write on them. I take pictures and I print the pictures and I write on the pictures. But anyway, this is something I enjoy. So um, this is why I pre-ordered this book. I think it's going to be available uh, between the end of August or se September. And I did uh, order it from uh, uh, Tribe Yarns, which is a uh, uh, yarn shop in London. If if I recall correctly, I'll maybe have to um, correct that uh, uh, later on. Uh, uh, you can you can see in the description box there will be the links. And the Tribe Yarn uh, uh, is uh, offering the pre-order for the book, uh, even though uh, big world companies, and I'm not going to name them, you will be able to find them for yourself. Uh, have the book uh, to, to pre-order too. Um, and even though it's uh, an order from uh, UK, so I'm in France, so uh, I will have to pay taxes and I did pay a bit of shipping because almost half of the price of the book. Um, I prefer to order when I can uh, from uh, smaller companies or independent companies uh, rather than big world companies. Uh, of course, if I can't find anywhere uh, a book, uh, I will go to these world companies because in France it's not easy um, to have uh, books in other languages. Uh, my library carries some, a few books in English it's all about literature, Shakespeare and everything. Uh, so very little book in English and zero books about fiber or knitting in English. So I have to buy them. I'm very happy because I'm a book collector and I like to have the books with me. Um, but anyway, in France, it's not very easy. Maybe in big cities like in Paris, maybe you have specialized bookstores that can carry 
uh, knitting books in English, maybe they are, but not where I live. So uh, I ordered it uh, from uh, this uh, yarn store uh, in England, in UK. So, so uh, that's about uh, my book uh, informations and the ones I've ordered. Um, so I will show them to you once uh, they arrive. Um, so now we're going to go to the uh, part, to the section where uh, I, I was looking for that in other podcasts, but I could not find it. So I'm going to make it and I'm maybe going to make a hashtag. So if people want to, uh, um, to pick up on this idea and do them, do it for themselves. Uh, please do use uh, the hashtag. I will try to have a video playlist of uh, um, all the videos that are made with uh, this hashtag. And it's, it's going to be about uh, news about the fiber community uh, in terms of uh, yarn releases or patterns or uh, news about the fiber community. Uh, and maybe there are people who do that. I'm very, very sorry I did not find you. And if you uh, know of some podcast to do that, please uh, uh, tell me down below in the comments uh, sections because I will be very, very interested in uh, uh, having a look and following them because this is something I like um, in other uh, in another another world another podcast world I uh, do look at uh, a bit about the beauty community uh, so beauty okay uh, and and some some podcasts and some uh, YouTube channels talk a lot about uh, the new releases new makeup releases so. The fiber community is nothing to compare to the makeup community in terms of production and new production. You know, Colourpop uh, airs <laughs> two collections per week. Uh, that is uh, very uh, at a very fast pace. It's not at all the, the situation with the fiber community. But I am looking about new fiber community news or I'm not sure how I'm going to call it new fiber community releases or new fiber releases, but it's not only about fiber. It's more about the community around it. It's about yarn, but uh, not about uh, necessarily fiber uh, only. So uh, I'll see how I'm going to name it. I'm going to ha maybe have to think a bit of it. Uh, so uh, the first news that got my attention was uh, about uh, um, uh, La Bien-Aimée, uh, Aimé Gilles, uh, who had a brick and mortar uh, shop uh, in France, in Paris. Uh, I never got to be able to visit. Uh, but anyway, she uh, released a new colorway that really caught my eye. Um, it's called RGO, it stands for Really Good Orange. Uh, she had a little Instagram uh, teaser asking people what uh, uh, they would think RGO means. Uh, so I said red goes orange, which could have been <laughs> also uh, um, a good name. Um, uh, but anyway, it's a very orange uh, colorway. There is a RGO tomato associated with it, with, which is more on the uh, red um, side. Um, and uh, uh, it's uh, inspired by, let me uh, read her name so that I don't uh, butcher it too much. Uh, it's uh, based uh, uh, or it's in honor of Gay Glass Pie. I think it's her name, and I'm gonna link down uh, her Instagram uh, down below. Uh, I did subscribe. I, I, I'm very sorry once again. I had no no idea 
the uh, iconic orange lady existed. Very, very sorry. But uh, I subscribed to her... Oh, sorry, this fell down. I subscribed to her um, uh, newsletter by email and uh, she uh, uh, sends about one or two emails per week, one email per week, and uh, I enjoy very much her reading, reading her, uh, what she publishes, and uh, um, uh, it's a very interesting person uh, that uh, uh, has very interesting views on the fiber community and life, life in general, and I do encourage you to subscribe to her newsletter or follow her on Instagram. Maybe there are other parts where, or the sites where you can find her. Uh, I haven't look, uh, looked beyond that. But uh, anyway, um, it was a very, uh, it's a very interesting colorway. You don't find that very often. It's not in my comfort zone. Uh, maybe, maybe I will buy one or two skins, uh, but I need you know, I'm not buying yarn for the sake of buying yarn. When I buy yarn, um, I always have an idea. Maybe it's not, it doesn't end up, uh, I do not end up making what I had in mind when I bought the yarn. But when I buy the yarns, I always have an idea in my mind. So my stash is not very big. I have a few sweaters ahead of me and a couple shawls, but that's all. And no more than that, and uh, um, I need to have an idea about what to be making with that very bright orange or even the red one. So that's, that was a very interesting release, uh, at least uh, to, to me. Um, another, another news that uh, caught my eye is that uh, Pip and Pin uh, is uh, donc her name um, is Megan uh, Nodecker has uh, uh, relooked uh, the uh, Hermund Pleasant pattern, uh, so has released a new uh, print about it. If you already have it, I think uh, she said you uh, will find the new version in your uh, Ravelry, Ravelry store. Um, uh, but it's a very I think one day I'm I'm gonna need that one. I don't have it, but uh, uh, I think I'm gonna need this uh, sweater, which uh, is really appealing to me. And uh, I like very much to follow her and listen to her podcast. I'm gonna uh, link down below her own podcast, uh, which is way more professional than mine. And um, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, something that caught my eye. Uh, there is also a new pattern from Espace Tricot. Espace Tricot. So let's uh, say with, with my French accent. Um, so Espace Tricot is a yarn shop in Canada. Uh, and so they do carry a lot of uh, yarns uh, and other notions and uh, other uh, things around knitting, like bags and things like that. They used to publish a podcast and I'm going to uh, link it down below but uh, since the beginning of the pandemic they haven't published any new podcast but this is a new pattern it's called La Bise so La Bise uh, it's the kiss uh, it's the way we used to before the pandemic greet uh, each other in France once you know someone just a little bit it's very very or it was very very common uh, to kiss these people, this person. Um, several areas of France have several ways of kissing. In my era, it's three kisses, one, two, three. Some areas it's four, some areas it's only one, uh, some is two. Anyway, um, we do kiss a lot. Uh, we did kiss a lot each other to say hello in the morning. Uh, to co-workers, to friends, to your kids. Now with the pandemic, we are social distancing and applying some uh, some ways to say hello 
which are not touching so the, the other person so you wave with your head or you touch your elbow or your fist but um, the pandemic has very much um, destroyed unfortunately uh, uh, this habit we have and other parts of the, of the world also has uh, like in Canada for example and uh, it's uh, you know to me it's very nostalgic because uh, uh, other than my kids I haven't kissed anyone uh, I haven't kissed my parents who are old and vaccinated they are vaccinated but they are very old and I don't do not want to take the risk of um, you know, carrying something that I might trans the virus that I might uh, transmit uh, them and have them very sick or even worse than that. So la bise is a um, is some kind of nostalgic um, uh, thing that uh, caught my eye when they released this pattern. Uh, and uh, also, so this is an older release, but because I do not think um, it's uh, uh, up again, it's uh, carried again, uh, I don't think she has it on her website. Uh, I do not think I made a screenshot of the one color I was interested in. It's uh, uh, a bag from uh, Hohi, uh, who is in Argentina, if I recall correctly. Uh, and it's the XL Hobo bag and she had one in a very bright, ocean bright blue. Uh, that was very, very, very nice. So now she has other colors um, on her website. Um, but this XL Hobo bag is really something that I want one day be able to buy and pay shipping and taxes and uh, I will have to make my calculations and uh, I will have to think ahead and uh, um, arrange so that I have, I can buy it, but I think one day I will buy it. And if you are on the American continent, there are several um, young shops uh, that carry uh, their uh, her stuff in uh, uh, either the United States, of course in South America, but e either in the United States or in Canada. Espas Tricot carries some of their, of her bags. Uh, I think the, maybe the, I don't know, I'm not going to say it if, if I, I, will, I will have to verify if um, one other place carries it or not. And uh, uh, several places in the United States and of course in Argentina. And uh, um, it's probably a bit easier for you to get it. Uh, these look very well made. She also has shoes that she released recently. She had another batch made. Uh, I do wear that kind of shoes. I buy them from UK. So um, I think it's gonna be a bit more difficult now for me to have them again, once again. But anyway, um, uh, she has very, very beautiful um, uh, items around knitting and she creates also very beautiful patterns. But this Excel boho bag really caught my eye. Uh, so um, I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk, that I had taken notes for uh, this, this podcast. Uh, so I'm in the Pyrenees right now so I went and I think I'm, I'm going to make another podcast specifically about it to um, uh, this uh, farm where uh, this young lady raises goats from the Himalaya uh, to pro make more hair uh, she and, and I've used to go there uh, once a year when I come on vacation in this area um, when the previous owner owner who created the place, uh, uh, founded it, uh, or created it um, years and years and years ago, and that was 30 years ago, because I've been coming here uh, almost every day, almost every year, not every year, but almost every year for 30 years, and buying yarn from this person who uh, retired and sold uh, her farm to a young 
uh, lady who took it uh, to another level. Uh, so I'm going to just show you, and I, I, I think I will make a podcast specifically on, 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 on her farm and, and she's very nice. Uh, so this is, of course, it's a blue. I'm quite sorry, it's a blue. This is her f smallest uh, mohair from, so it's silk mohair, and I write the specifications down, and maybe you can stay tuned, and um, I'll talk about it a bit uh, more once uh, I've gathered all my thoughts and notes. Um, so it's mohair silk. It's an uh, indigo dye, it's a natural dye, uh, and uh, she uh, raises the goats. She uh, gets, of course, uh, the wool from the goats. She has it uh, washed and uh, um, uh, processed elsewhere. It's natural dyes, and so I thought this color was really, really beautiful. So I got a sweater quantity for this. She, she has a bigger uh, mohair uh, than this one. And I already have the two sweater quantities uh, from last year and the year before. I've had no time to uh, knit them. I did not find the proper pattern. Uh, maybe I'm going to make my own. But, uh, you know, when you knit in the round, uh, and, and you make some raglan uh, shoulders that I like. The weight of the sweater is weighting on, a bit, lot of weight on the few stitches on the shoulder. So I have to think about it. I, I, I did need something like that with camel, a camel yarn that is very soft, but, but the weight of the sweater is too heavy. And uh, I don't like what it does to the uh, few stitches who are uh, which are on the on the shoulder. So I have to be thinking if I make in pieces and I sew them, or if I found a pattern where uh, you start uh, from the shoulder and there is sort of a seam here and then you knit the sleeves um, in the second, um, uh, as a second picking up stitches here. It, and it makes it more uh, stiffer uh, and less prone to uh, uh, the, the stitches being elongated with the weight of the sweater. So anyway, I have to think about that. So this is the first one, it's very soft. And this is the second one, it's the same mohair. Uh, so it's a lot of out of my comfort zone, it's a yellow. So here you have it. Uh, here is the yellow, but uh, she had a few problems with uh, um, the dye, so um, I bought a sweater quantity and I think I'm going to make uh, another, an another sorel, sorel, sorel uh, but the winter one, uh, when you held uh, together two yarns, a finger in weight and the, and the mohair. mohair. Uh, so this is also more hair silk. So she had a few problems with the dye. So um, before dye, uh, knitting with that, I have to wash it again and have it dry. So it's a bit rough uh, for now. And when you touch it, your feet goes go yellow. But she said once uh, you have it uh, washed and you uh, hang the skins to uh, dry again, you wash it with some uh, soft uh, soap, Marseille soap. She said, uh, it's okay, it, the, the excess color uh, goes away and then it won't bleed and, uh, anymore. And it will make the yarn a bit softer because the dye makes it very stiff. It's a natural dye. I don't recall. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'll, uh, it's Reseda. Yes, it's re Reseda, which is a plant. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, maybe before I uh, finish uh, here for now, I'm not sure for how long I've been talking, 40 minutes, it's a bit long. Um, I will finish with what is just behind me. So I'm going to scoot a bit more on the side. What is just behind me? Uh, it's a quilt that my mother made. made. Uh, so I'm in their apartment in the mountains. Um, and... Uh, um, a small apartment uh, and I love 
this quilt so very much. So I said, uh, if one day she sells this place, this, my parents uh, sell this place because they, are, they can't come here any longer. It's too far away and, you know, they can't drive. And anyway, my father is a bit sick right now. So, um, so they can't come any longer. So I said, well, if you want to sell this place once, uh, one day, uh, please remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would very much like you give this quilt to me. For now, it's very, it's it's perfect where it is, uh, but I like it very much. She has made a few quilts for me when I was uh, fifty, when I was fifty-five, because I'm a bit older than that. And uh, um, uh, I do really much enjoy uh, the quilt she makes. Uh, she let me pick up the patterns, so I'm, you know, I like the uh, Amish quilts, the Japanese quilts. Uh, she's made that for myself because she doesn't like them, but she made them for me. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, uh, the final, the final information and the final touch to this uh, podcast for now. And uh, I'll try to gather uh, a bit more information on uh, uh, the farm uh, that I can show you the farm uh, uh, in the Pyrenees where I got this, I got this beautiful mohair yarn. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for interacting. And uh, I'll see you later in the next 